Good morning. It is the vlog ride and we are heading into work. Um, it is a really nice morning. Um, so for me, nice mornings are not like bright sunny mornings. Um, as evidenced by the fact that you don't see that shadow thing across half my face. It is so foggy right now. Um, <clears throat> it's not the thick fog that hangs on the road so thick that you can't see more than a foot or two in front of you. Um, it's not that thick. Um, it's that thick um, that seems to gather up consistently further away from you, and it is so cool. Um, it is thick enough that um, that my pre k -er was uh, commenting about it on the way to school. I love days like this. It is so pretty. It's, it's going to dry out in a couple of hours um, when the sun really gets up and hot, but right now, the world looks like the freaking mist. It's great. Um, but without the, uh, movie sucky ending. So I didn't like the end. I really didn't. I, I didn't like, we'll talk about it sometime. We're not going to talk about it today because I want to talk about Neon Genesis Evangelion today. Um, we're not talking about Star Wars either. Um, but we, we will talk about the mist one day. Oh, we will talk about the mist. Anyway, um, so, on to topic. Um, I want to take a, a break from Star Wars, and I wanted to talk about uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, I briefly mentioned this on Twitter, and so I wanted to, to sit down and talk about it. And what better time to talk about cool stuff than in the car. So, I'm going to start this by saying, please do not tell me. I've only watched the first couple of episodes again. Um, so please do not talk to me about later episodes. Not because I've never seen it before. I have. Um, I saw it about two decades ago now. God, I'm getting old. Anyway, I saw it ages and ages ago. But it has been so long since I've seen it that while I remember the general gist of it, um and all that stuff, I don't remember specifics of the episodes and stuff. Um, a lot of the characters in it um, are long forgotten. A lot of episode-to-episode -episode events are, are forgotten. So, it has been a very, very long time since I've seen this show. I remember when I saw it, I loved the show, but I did not like the end. Um, I felt disappointed and, and let down by the end. It did not feel like the rest of the show. Um, I don't remember if I've seen End of Evangelion or not. Um, I have seen Folding Ideas um, video about it, which I thought was really good. Um, it's really interesting. He goes into some of the history um, behind the show, both the factual history the mythologized history, and then based on all that, his interpretation of End of, End of Evangelion. Um, of the mythologized history, I don't really know how much of it is true and how much of it isn't, um, but uh, he does lay out some solid facts about things that were going on with the show and with the things that the creators were putting into it. Um, I cannot remember the guy's name right now. I'm sorry. I just, I can't. Um, I am sure I will be talking about this show again, so I'll find it and remember it and commit it to memory, I promise. Um, but he does talk about the stuff that he was putting into it, so I do understand better now than I did then what was going on with the show, and I think I will enjoy the entirety of the show better watching it now uh, than I did then, so I'm looking forward to that. So that said, don't talk to me about later episodes right now. Um, I just want to focus on the first one or two episodes um, because that's where I'm at right now. I found it on Netflix, um, so I've started watching it again. Um, so I say we'll probably come back to it because I do remember it is a very meaty show. Um, there is a lot that can be discussed with it, so we will come back to it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I don't remember if I saw an end of Evangelion or not, um, but I know I did sh see the end of the show run, 
And I'm, I was not an otaku kind of fan or anything like that. Um, for some, what I hope were obvious reasons. Um, but I still was disappointed in it. And I think I was disappointed in it because I did not understand some of the psychology um, going on in the show at the time. So having a better understanding of that, I think I will have a different enjoyment of it. Um, one of the reasons that it's really important to have discussions like this about works. Anyway, so, all right. Going back to folding ideas. Um, he talks about the mythologized history of the show and he talks about his interpretation of End of Evangelion and what um, is being said about fans and also about main characters and specifically the audience insert characters, um, which Shinji is. Um, he is the audience surrogate. Um, he is the character who throughs, uh, whose eyes we see the world through. Um, he is the main character. He is the main protagonist. Um, he is our insert. He is our surrogate. Um, and there are some very interesting things that, um, Dan Olson, uh, feels were being said about the fans and about that type of character. Um, here's the thing though, having watched the first couple of episodes, I don't think that messaging is unique to End of Evangelion. Um, I, um, I don't think that a lot of the other stuff interpreted in what was being said about uh, fans and whatnot holds for the beginning of the show. Um, whether or not those are actually in End of Evangelion or not. Again, interpretation. Um, and again, it depends on how much of the mythologized history is true. All right. Um, but uh, he, he says some things about the audience insert character. And in End of Evangelion, no matter how much of the other stuff about otaku culture and talking about otaku culture is true, there is definitely a message there about the protagonist and the audience and the audience insert, uh, the audience surrogate. Um, and it is not the interpretation from end of Evangelion, end of Evangelion that uh, folding ideas has is not. A favorable interpretation for that view. Um, but again, I don't think that is unique to that. I think that that is something that was there from the beginning of the show. Um, at least to some degree. Not necessarily all the condemnations, but definitely a statement and a reevaluation of it. So let's talk about the first couple of episodes. Um, we meet Shinji. Um, we get to see this world. Um, it is a world of almost no civilization left. Um, uh, the, these, uh, uh, strange angel creatures have come and are wiping out humanity. And there is a last hope of humanity um, Shinji's father is involved in this and he is going, I don't really remember in the first episode why he's going, um, but he's going. Um, we get there as an angel is attacking the city and, um, we find out there had already been one battle against this thing. Um, we see the, um, battle mech um, that Shinji ends up piloting. And there's this expectation that he's going to pilot it. And then there's this expectation that he has to pilot it right now. And there is that classic hesitation. Um, he sees the other pilot who's being brought out to pilot it. And she is severely injured to the point that just moving reopens her wounds. And she starts bleeding again. And this is right. Um, and 
it creates for, Sin for Shinji a situation where he realizes if she gets into that mech, she is going to die. He doesn't have a choice. And then the mech reacts to him. Um, and everyone kind of realizes he's already got this connection to this machine. Um, so he goes, okay, fine, I will do it. And he gets in and he does it. Um, and it might be the first three episodes that I've seen. I, I really don't remember. Sorry, I don't. I think it's, I think it's the first three. Because we have that. Then we have the battle. And he gets wrecked pretty bad. Um, but then it's like this really cool thing where we see him get wrecked pretty bad. The next episode, he wakes up in the hospital and we think, okay, it's from getting wrecked really bad. Oh my God, what happened to everything? And then we find out, yeah, he got wrecked pretty bad, but he toasted that angel. Like that thing is gone. He defeated it. He won. Um, but in winning, he got messed up really bad. He got hurt horribly. Um, and the rest of the episode is really interesting because the whole time I'm watching the episode, I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh my God, this poor kid. Because he has been so severely traumatized by everything that happened. Like, just amazingly so. Um, I don't remember the woman who, um, has, her, has him come and live with her. Um, I can't remember her name, but there is this awkward way that he interacts with her and it's in watching that and in realizing how traumatized he is, that awkwardness and how he's interacting with her is not just her being this uh, very attractive woman and him being a teenage boy um, with teenage boy hormones, he is also reacting through this horrible trauma he has just been through because he's just this normal kid when he comes to the city and gets tossed into this mech. He is not trained for this nothing in his life has prepared him for this. He has not gone through any kind of psychological training for, you know, dealing with violence and having to enact violence on another creature or another person. Um, he has not studied any kind of theories about battles and tactics and anything like that. Um, there has been nothing that has been done with this kid to prepare him um, for what he's about to go through. He hasn't even been trained and taught about what the machines are and how to use them and how to operate stuff. He's just tossed in. It fills up with liquid and he thinks he's going to drown. Like, and I don't know if you've ever seen The Abyss. Um, there's this really great, the, I, I like, I do like The Abyss. I really do. Um, and they do the whole thing where they're showing the oxygenated liquid, um, that's made for, uh, and I don't, I actually don't know if this stuff really exists or not, which is so sad for me. Um, but in the movie, um, it's, uh, this stuff is to be used for deep sea dives. And, um, there's the whole thing when, um, the main character has to use this stuff for the first time because he has to go out and, um, his, uh, the suit fills up with it. And he's freaking his shit out because he's having to breathe in uh, liquid. And I was kind of reminded of that. But, like, he's, like, I think he's, like, 14 or 15 um, in the show, uh, Shinji. Um, in the abyss, the adult who is used to being down in deep depths, even though he's not used this stuff before, he is dealt with more gently than Shinji is in trying to adjust to this liquid. Like, they explain to Dude's character in the Abyss what's going on with him and 
give him a frame of reference to have some kind of mental assurance that he's not going to drown, that this is going to be fine. Shinji's just told to deal with it, basically. Like, there is no... There is nothing to help ease him into this. You know, even... Um, like, his dad is... Like, when he first refuses, his dad's disappointed in him. Um, there is no rousing speech of, you can do this, and blah, blah, blah. At least nothing that affects him. And nothing that's really convincing. The whole thing that convinces him that he has to do it is nothing about how this is in him... Um, it's not even really the connection that he's already got, um, to the Ava. Um, it is looking down, seeing Ray try to get up and seeing her wound start to bleed out again and realizing that if she does this, she's going to die knowing that her life is hinging on him. That is what is the thing, like, it is trauma, it is somebody else's trauma now being put onto him that gets him into that Ava, he's not reacting awkwardly to this woman just because he's a teenage boy with teenage hormones and she's a very attractive young woman, he's reacting awkwardly because of that, and because he has just been through this horribly traumatic event um, that he was not ready for, that he was not prepared for. And watching those, uh, those first two or three episodes, it hits me. This is what we do to every audience surrogate protagonist. We have this situation, whether it is zombies or aliens or, um, you know, magical beasts, um, earthquakes, tsunamis, you know, sudden impossible freezing weather, whatever the situation is that we put our audience insert protagonist into, um, we, uh, the fog's already gone. <laughs> um, I think I drive out of it. Anyway, um, but we put them into this and we expect them to come out of it normal because we want to come out of it normal. And that is usually what happens. Um, some movies do deal to some degree with the trauma that comes with being in these horrible, really horrible situations if you think about it. But a lot of movies, especially action movies, um, are just all about, you know, giving the audience a surrogate character that they can identify with, putting that character into this incredible cir uh, circumstance, but they happen to be the one that can deal with it, and they do and it happens and you just go on and they continue being a hero throughout the rest of the movie, series, whatever. Yeah, Shinji is the one. He is the, he has this connection to this Ava. He is the person who is going to be able to most intimately pilot it. Um, he is the one who is going to be able to connect with it in such a way that he is going to be able to defeat the angel. That is not a good thing. Nothing about that is good. Not for him anyway. It takes such a toll on him and you can see it. And that was just amazing to me to watch. To have that realization of just how traumatic this was for him. Um, how horrible this was for him to have had to have gone through it. And not because he believed in himself, not because he was convinced that, yeah, this connection means he can save the world and he can be the big hero, but because if he didn't, this already traumatized girl was going to die. 
that is so much weight to put on this person who's not much older, if he's any older than my oldest kid. Like, I'm trying to think, like, what it would be like. I couldn't imagine looking at her and going, you have to do this. Like, putting her in that situation would just be... And, like, our life's not been easy. She's had to deal with some harsh situations. Um, you know, as far as just life goes. But... Yeah, like... That's just... What Shinji goes through in those fir- in that in those first episodes is just so brutal, and you can see how brutal his, it is on his psyche. It is just amazing, and it really feels like a condemnation of the audience insert of the audience surrogate. This it is looking at that concept and going, why would you think? this would ever be okay to do to someone. This is what it actually does when for your voyeuristic pleasure you make someone do this. It was really powerful to watch that and have that realization. And yeah. Um it makes you think about that whole concept of that chosen one you know fish out of water tossed into unusual circumstances character that it makes you look at that whole concept in a completely different way um so yeah I don't I don't know how, going back to End of Evangelion, I don't know how much of the condemnation folding ideas reads into in, End of Evangelion is there. Um, I don't know how much of that is intended from the author and how much of that is interpretation based on geek culture as it has matured over time. Um, but I do know that a lot of what is there did not start with End of Evangelion. Um, the examination of the audience surrogate character, um, you know, that examination, that condemnation of that concept is something that is anything other than horribly traumatic for that character that was there from the beginning and that's kind of amazing and yeah um I'm looking forward to watching more episodes again and delving more into the series um so alright um that's it uh that's what I wanted to talk about today um if you like this video, um, please like, share, subscribe. Um, happy to have you uh, share your own thoughts about the first couple of episodes. Um, uh, again, you know, I am re-watching it. It has been a very long time. So, while yes, I know the show, um, I want to re-experience the episodes as I go. So... You know, don't re-spoil them, I guess. Um, but, you know, I am happy to have a conversation about it. Let me know what you thought about the first couple of episodes and our introduction to Shinji as a character. Um, and peace.